get comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> What's your, your intro? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is called. Oh, and this is what I've heard about NUS. Mostly about like NUS guys. Hey everyone, it's Emily the Fangirl. If you're new to this channel, I talk about tech travel in Asia. Go ahead and click that subscribe button so you can follow along. So today I'm talking to Carmen and she's going to talk about her experience about getting into NUS and what it was like. Do you want to give some context about where you are now in your academic year and yeah, just give some background about yourself? So hello, I'm Carmen. Um, right now I'm actually a graduating student from NUS Business and I'm in my last semester now actually. Carmen's going to give us insight on what it's like to you know, attend one of the top schools in Asia, one of number one ranked in Singapore. <laughs> what does it take to get to the top? <laughs> so maybe we can explain maybe like your path, mm -hmm. right? Because you told me about like Polytechnic, um, like how you got into NUS that way. Mm -hmm. Maybe explain how you did that. Yeah. Okay, I think for me, I came, I actually went to, there are generally like two main routes to yeah. NUS, like um, junior college, which is like to get your A-level cert or like polytechnic to get your diploma and then you enter NUS. So um, it's just like the general like two main ways to go and I went from the polytechnic um, route where I actually studied tourism and resort management in business school um, for three years before getting my diploma and uh, entering NUS. What would you say is like the, the same like characteristic that most NUS students have? Is it like you know, like they're all type A or, you, you know, you guys are all very aggressive or you're all very good at studying. Like what's the, like what does it take to like get there? To, to get into NUS. Yeah, like in the top of your head. Hard work is definitely crucial mm -hmm. and cons consistency as well. Mm -hmm. I think um, be it whether, you know, you're from Polytechnic or you're from JC, you definitely have to be consistent in, mm -hmm. um, Honestly, I think the most important part to get into like um, NUS would be grades. They definitely look at your grades, mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, of course, like if you you have like a good portfolio as well, uh, that's something that they look at as well. Mm, yeah. Okay. So in the US, you know mm. how we have like SAT scores, right? So we like study our butts off just to get a good like perfect score. Yeah. Is there what's the equivalent? Do you guys have to take tests like a, a big like college test? before applying to college? I think for, it? yeah, so for junior college, it's yeah. like high school, right? Yeah. So um, they have to take a test for, mm -hmm. to get this like A-level certification mm -hmm. in order to get into like um, university. Okay. But for polytechnic, you have to get, you know, after you finish your three years, mm -hmm. it's actually GPA based. Oh. So um, you have your GPA at the end of your three years, you get a diploma and then you, apply for university mm, yeah okay okay so i remember you mentioning that when you kind of got into nus mm -hmm. through like polytechnic um what was it like kind of entering it through that way like how did you make new friends how did you get like acclimated into your new surroundings and classmates i think for me uh, it was really about being very intentional about um, you know, putting yourself in places to meet new people. Mm -hmm. And I think um, for me, like, that was something I wanted. Like, I told myself, okay, I, I want a pretty vibrant campus life when, mm -hmm. when I entered. So because I wanted that, before I entered, mm -hmm. I joined, like, you know, there are, like, business camps, mm -hmm. orientation camps that you can sign up for. Okay. So I think um, signing up for that before everyone became friends yeah. was really very useful because you know like we are kind of like starting out on the same page mm. and everyone doesn't know each other so um yeah i think that helped me to make friends okay cool is it very cutthroat though at nus because okay i went to a state school right mm -hmm. so i didn't go to a really good school <laughs> so for us we'd be like oh yeah like you know share notes mm -hmm. or we would like be like oh be careful of this professor like you know slide each other tricks mm -hmm. into but I have a friend who went to like Berkeley which mm -hmm. is like one of the best mm -hmm. schools and it's so cutthroat like everyone just like kind of focuses on their own stuff and they don't share answers to tests or they don't share like notes or anything like that what is it like at NUS I um, think there's definitely both sides to that yeah. um for the sharing notes part it's yeah. definitely um 
with like your friends mm-hmm. so like um, I had really good seniors I had great friends who would Mm-hmm. Um, you know, share notes and I'll be like, oh, like I missed out this part, can you help me with that? So yeah. we would like help each other. Okay. So I think that's why making friends is super <laughs> important, like yeah. good friends. But yeah. on the other side of the story, there's, it's also very competitive and I think mm-hmm. it's very understandable as well. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not sure if, do you work on a bell curve system? Mm, we do for some classes. It depends on the class. Oh, okay. Yeah, so not like the entire, um, like, the entire academic program, mm-hmm. but for some classes that students consistently fail, like oh, finance, okay. there is okay. a bell curve. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I think for us is like I think in Singapore in general. Um, I'm not sure if it applies to all school, but mm-hmm. for NUS uh, business, we do it on a bell curve like system. Okay. So I think because of the nature of that, it makes yeah. things um extremely competitive. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I first entered. Yeah. NUS, I was like, wow, like there are so many like smart people here, mm-hmm. and I think because of that, the bell curve, like you, because the bell curve is really about like you know, it's not how much you get for your test, but mm-hmm. it's about where you stand among everyone. Ah. So I think that that makes it like really stressful for everyone. Yeah. Um, what was like the biggest resource that you found at school then? Like, because you mentioned now that you're looking for a job, mm-hmm. like was it the career center? Was it talking to counselors? Um, like besides doing the workshops? I think it's definitely um, something that I just discovered this mm-hmm. semester was that uh, there's actually like, okay, I knew there was a career office that we could go to for help, mm-hmm. but I didn't see the need to in my initial years. Yeah. But I think uh, in my last semester, like I just like uh, happened to meet someone who mm-hmm. told me like, hey, um, maybe you could like arrange a session with me and then we'll talk it out. So mm-hmm. I think that is something that I found extremely useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the same time, there was also like, they help you with like your resumes. Oh, okay. So they have like professional people to, to actually, you know, like you send your resume back and forth to, to mm. like make it better. So Do you actually get to meet them in person and do that? Or? We do have classes, like compulsory classes to yeah. do it in person. But okay. I think the one that I just did this year was mm. like online. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think those are all really great <coughs> Like resources, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah, that will like prepare you for the future. Oh, should we eat our tiramisu mm-hmm. too? <laughs> okay, let's eat it. I will, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, these are so cute. Carmen bought these for us. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so cute. <laughs> this is a an NUS video turned mukbang. <laughs> <laughs> mukbang is a nice one. I know, actually. So I never understood the appeal of mukbangs mm-hmm. until I started watching them, and I was like, ah, oh, there's something like satisfying about someone biting into like Korean fried chicken or just like the the ASMR. Yeah. Like you can use this yeah. to like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is the difficult part. Oh no! Oh wait, <laughs> you did it. Can you need help? Wait, have you, you know that, do you watch the mukbang of like, the Korean guy, he was like, trying to make cheese? Oh, and then, then he got it it, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I saw it, I saw it. <laughs> Can you help here? Can you switch? Here, take this one. Okay. Hopefully I can open it. Oh shit. Oh, there you oh go. wow, okay. okay. I'm very strong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is called... Oh! <gasps> oh no! <laughs> so now you're mature and wiser than when you were when you first started NUS. Like looking back, I guess what advice would you say to like people who want to get into NUS or are going to NUS? I think if I were to give like people who are going to NUS an advice, yeah. I would say definitely be open to joining like different clubs in school yeah. to make friends. And I think at the same time, for example, for me, I was interested in marketing. Mm-hmm. So I joined like marketing related committees. Mm-hmm. I think that really helped me in while well, having fun, also like learn skills such as like, you know, planning an event, working with sponsors and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think that was very interesting for me. Yeah. So like be open to just really like joining different things and there are actually a lot of resources and workshops that are that that are made available to you so sign up for the workshops as well i mean it's free so (laughs) it that's a perk for sure yeah 
Yeah. I think when now that I started working at a company, I think what always makes me like super like, happy is seeing mm-hmm. students who are very passionate or just excited about anything that we're doing or mm-hmm. want to work with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think if you bring like energy or you work with um, external groups, mm-hmm. It really does help build your career portfolio. And you never know who you'll meet, too. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because, like, if you're working with sponsorships or partners, mm-hmm. like, I'm sure you meet so many people, like, outside mm-hmm. of, like, college. Yeah. What was your, your favorite class? And what was your the worst class you hated? <laughs> <laughs> I hope my professors don't see this. I know. No, I um, highly doubt it. I okay. Well, I, well, you don't have to say the name. Or just generalize it like okay i would generalize yeah. the one i i yeah. didn't like like this finance class you know no. i think the one maybe i'll start with the good one first okay. yeah so i think there were two marketing classes that mm-hmm. i took that like were the most memorable for me mm-hmm. maybe i'll talk about the one that i just took like this semester because mm-hmm. it's like my final sem mm-hmm. but it was about uh, like design thinking mm-hmm. and you know it I found it really interesting because we got to like you know like come up with an idea mm-hmm. and then my uh, professor actually invited like guest speakers to the class he made the the course like the module very relevant to uh, fintech which was something that because of this class I actually like grew interest in it like more interest and mm-hmm. I wanted to you know find out more about it so he invited like speakers to come down, you know, to teach about things such as like blockchain or like speakers um, who are founders of startups and stuff to, to come over. And I thought that yeah. was very, like I could see the link between that and like reality. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought that was very interesting for me. Yeah. And on the other hand, I think, so my batch was actually the first batch who was under the new curriculum in NUS Business. Okay. So there was this um, one particular module mm-hmm. that I took that I was also like, you know, the, the pioneer batch taking it. Like a guinea pig. Yeah, I was yeah. the guinea pig. <laughs> and I think because of that, it was extremely difficult. Mm. Um, it was actually related to like coding and oh, I had no coding knowledge at all. So mm. I think it was a really steep learning curve for me. Yeah. And I felt that, you know, I wish that it was more like step by step. But mm. like from talking with juniors right now, I think they made it a lot easier so yeah you know, I, I wish that I took it now instead yeah. because it would be more step by step I guess mm. yeah okay that makes sense and I guess like in these classes how big are your class size like how many students are there and like do you get enough one-on-one attention with your professor like do you guys ask questions mm-hmm. do you get to like debate your professor for our classes it's about on average about 50 oh, okay. um sometimes my classes are really large like mm. before covid yeah. i had a class with over 60 people but that was the maximum oh. yeah but um on average it's about 50 people per class and um for business school, it's really like there's a lot of like class participation. So mm-hmm. I, I think it should be similar in the US. I'm not sure. Because when I went to Canada, it was the same. We had like some of our classes, mm-hmm. it was like 500 people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. like in one room? In one like, oh, like, lecture? Yeah, like an auditorium oh, sometimes. Oh, okay. Or if it was like an online online class, it's also 500 mm-hmm. people. So it's like a professor and then he has like five TAs, like teacher assistants. Yeah. Okay, I, I sat yeah. for like those classes before, but it yeah. was more like when I was in junior year. Mm. But at the same time, it depends on what faculty you are in. Yeah. So um, because I'm in marketing, so it's mainly like the, mm. the 50 people kind of class where mm. we there's a lot of like class participation. So for this semester, I mm. actually had like a class with like 40% class participation, which was really stressful. Wait, how do, what, do, what does that mean though? Like you're, you're forced, you have to participate. You have to, if not, your grades would be like oh down. Gosh. Yeah, I think it's really stressful because, of course, like yeah. not everyone can answer the question. Yeah. Like, you can't have 50 people like all speaking, so mm-hmm. I think um, you have to answer like properly as well. You know, like mm-hmm. to show the professor that like this is my train of thoughts, and yeah. sometimes for professors that care a lot about the quality, you need to give examples as well. Oh. Yeah. So you can't just say something like. Oh, you actually you can. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. but mm-hmm. just ask questions. Just raise your hands. It's like oh. very free flow in a way. Oh, and okay, in some ways, though, I think that's actually quite important in life. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that's such a good life skill mm-hmm. because you you grow 
used to, you know, just asking questions or clarifying things mm-hmm. or not feeling afraid to like speak up. I know it's like I, I feel like I used to have that issue too. Like I'd always be like, raise your hand, raise your hand, and then I'd turn really red and then I would like say something. I think that's a good thing that they made you guys do. I felt shy like even yeah. up to my last semester in school mm. because you know sometimes you just. Want to try, but you're not mm. sure whether you're right. But you don't want to be wrong as well, yeah. because it's like embarrassing to get it wrong. But yeah. you know, like I told myself, like okay, like everyone makes mistakes, and mm-hmm. I need my grades. <laughs> so yeah. like I'll just raise up my hands and try. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think yeah, that's a, that's the thing too, right? It's like everyone's afraid to like be wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like I feel like if you're wrong, it just lasts for like what ten seconds, and then people move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You probably you care about it more than other people do. Yeah. Because yeah. they're probably in their head thinking, how do I ask a question? And then they're like also like form- formulating something to yeah. get participation yeah. points. Are there a lot of government subsidies? Let me kind of give you an example. So like in the U.S., a one year. Could be around like fifty thousand, like US, with tuition. Yeah, room and board. It's so expensive. I know. That's why we're all broke after we graduate. <laughs> That's why all Americans are broke. Wait, as like hell. fifty, like uh-huh. fifty thousand for like one throughout. year. What? One year. What? Yeah. And that's a very expensive. Program. It's so expensive. Yeah, it is, and that that's I'm I'm, I'm that's not even private yet, it, but that's considering like a lot of things though. Like I'm mm-hmm. talking about like books. Like my books were like a hundred, so could be like a hundred fifty, mm-hmm. and then we have um, like if you live on campus, mm-hmm. we also like live on yeah. campus, right? Yeah. Or like food, you have to pay for food, uh, tuition. Um, we even have to pay fees to like the gym, like like random crap like that. So like even when you don't use it, mm-hmm. wow, it's it's, it's, in, it's enclosed. It's so expensive, and it's in USD. Yeah, and this is yeah, and this is also like domestic. That's why there's this ongoing thing where like, damn, like if international students come in because they pay more than us, yeah. we're like, they're like rich, rich. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mostly these like Chinese students. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways. But we do get, we get funding too though. Like there's scholarships. We have scholarships and government funding. So it's yeah. like the scholarships easy to get or like the funding for everyone? Or? Mm. So if you don't, like for me, I... Like, my parents didn't make a certain mm-hmm. amount of income, mm-hmm. so I could apply mm-hmm. for financial aid, mm-hmm. and they would give that to me, the government. Mm-hmm. Um, other ways, it's like, you have to have a certain GPA mm-hmm. to apply, yeah, things mm-hmm. like that, yeah. Was it at the same at NUS? <laughs> I think that the thing that I'm, like, super thankful about is mm-hmm. that I would say that our education is, like, affordable, like, after hearing about this, yeah. because for local students, the government actually gives us, like, all of us, tuition something called the tuition grant if i'm not i think it's called the tuition grant Mm -hmm. for every local student in Mm -hmm. a local university yeah so with that being said um per year i actually pay like about 9.6k after the tuition grant but if you don't have that it would be about um for it depends on the faculty you're in so for business school it would be about 32,000 per year Without that, so with that, it's, it's like nine point six k. Wow. Yeah. I think one thing that the Singaporean government does really well is like mm-hmm. they take care of their people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. Oh, and this is kind of like super off topic, and this is what I heard about NUS. NUS guys. Yeah. Yeah. So I heard that NUS doesn't. St- it stands for something else like the acronym like some I remember I was on um, I think I know what you're gonna say but like yeah okay I was on like mothership and then people Mm -hmm. were like oh my god can you tell me like why people call NUS National Upskirt University like Um, that what yeah, I, I think recently there, there has mm-hmm. been an increase in the amount of cases of like students yeah. or professors, mm-hmm. you know, like engaging in like sexual harassment and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Well, I, I did, I'm shocked myself. I didn't know that. I mean, I'm sure like in every university has people like that, but yeah. I think there's definitely no excuse for, for all these. And yeah. um, I mean, on a personal level, mm. I've I've never experienced like such things. But mm. I think with that being said, we, we have to be careful all the time. I mean I'm I'm disappointed. Yeah. I mean it's I, I think like sexual harassment is like the worst crime you can commit. Mm. Like for me personally. Mm-hmm. If you think about things like 
you know, murder or is murder or rape worse? I would be like, rape is the worst thing you can do to someone. But with that being said, I think this is a like it's really sad. Yeah. So, so I think for me, I'm I'm like sad but also angry. When I was like reading on the news, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it. Like obviously, a lot of like women were mm-hmm. like angry or like offended, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's like, okay, like how do we protect our women, right? Like these are like the. Or, mm-hmm. like these are we are human beings too mm-hmm. like we shouldn't be treated this way mm-hmm. and I feel like some people in the past have gotten off lightly I hope that they're able to kind of control it better mm-hmm. or just raise awareness about mm-hmm. it I, I mean I yeah. feel that you know like if someone commits such a thing the yeah. person should definitely be like expelled for yeah. sure like, yeah for sure but <laughs> yeah like if I, like if you're a pervert taking a photo of yeah. a girl like yeah. get out of the school you don't mm-hmm. everything should like all merit yeah. is wiped yeah you know? and i think like reasons such as stress shouldn't be is that like, even a thing um I mean, you know, sometimes people can say like, oh, like, I'm stressed and stuff like that. So I think, um, you know, no matter what excuse you have, you know, like, no matter what excuse it yeah. is, you know, it it shouldn't explain or justify why you, you had to do that. Yeah, so. like, you, I think, <laughs> like, if you're stressed, like, you should be like, I don't know, go drink or just smoke a cigar. I don't know. Wait, what or go for a run. Yeah, go. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yours is yeah. better. <laughs> go mine's, for like, <laughs> mine's like, mine's <laughs> like... Uh, but I'm glad mm-hmm. you never like personally faced it either. Mm-hmm. That was an issue on my campus too. We didn't have like people taking photos, but it was like late at night. Like women, we would actually have to. They, I mean, they would, they would implement these things around campus. Oh, I I experienced yeah. that in Canada. Yeah. It was. I thought that that was really like good. Uh, but how fast can police come? Mm-hmm. You know, right? So it's like a button yeah. and you press it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine one one is like yeah, campus police. Yeah, and then they come riding on their bikes. <laughs> when, when I first got on campus yeah. in in Canada, like yeah. they pay. You know, it's like this one t- kind of yeah. photo around our dorms yeah. with this really scary looking guy. Oh. And they're like, if anyone sees him, please call blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, then they would have like those buttons around school. So mm-hmm. I thought that kind of made me feel a bit safer yeah. too. So Yeah. No, but I mean, for me, like, yeah, even at school, because this happened, mm-hmm. if I'm going into bathroom and it's mm-hmm. like, because I would take 7 to 10 p.m. classes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's late. Yeah, so it's like three hours once a week. I would go into the bathroom and I'd literally like kick open every single door to make sure no one's hiding in there. <laughs> and then I'd use the restroom. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, that there's definitely like an yeah. element of fear. Like when I go yeah. into the bathroom in school. Yeah. I would like kind of look around you know like is there a camera like oh. hopefully not oh. like some just I think out of like fear really yeah. because there's so much news about yeah. you know like secret cameras hidden cameras and yeah. stuff like that so but you're, so you're afraid of the camera I'm like, afraid of the, the camera, camera yeah. I'm afraid of the person <laughs> Such <laughs> cultural, <laughs> cultural, <laughs> such a different cultural I, I don't thing. think I've seen a guy in like a female bathroom before but yeah but yeah. it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Uh, yeah. That makes me. I don't know. There needs to be justice. They need to get caned. Yeah. Yeah. They, they need, need to, get, to be in jail. Yeah. And get like caned. caned. Like the exactly. the real one. Yeah. Exactly. For how many women they do it to? Actually, if you do it to one woman, you should get caned ten times. Yeah. 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 Look Sounds at us great. making legislation. Vote <laughs> <laughs> <But> for us. <laughs> Maybe we can just talk about like your like afterthoughts too right now that you're looking for a job um and you know college is behind you like how do you feel about that like isn't it kind of for me it's kind of like a a new era of adulthood Mm -hmm. now you have to be a grown-up like you Mm -hmm. can't like Mm -hmm. you know you won't be able the the, the sad thing too is like when i was studying i got to see my friends all the time yeah yeah and now it's like you just see your coworkers all the time and you don't get to pick and choose your coworkers. what if your coworkers watch this oh no i like my coworkers. (laughs) yeah (laughs) i do i like i like my coworkers. yeah i'm just saying like Mm -hmm. in the past right like my first job i didn't like some of my coworkers. Mm -hmm. yeah and then i was like i'm like stuck with them Mm -hmm. whereas in college you know everyone you like is like always around and Mm -hmm. you make friends so much more easily Mm -hmm. yeah so like what about you like how are you feeling like transitioning now into adulthood i think the part that i would miss the most is definitely being able to to just like you know suffer with my friends Mm -hmm. because you know although school is really tiring it can be stressful but i think the fact that you can do it with your friends yeah um, makes it a lot better and a lot more fun mm. but 
I think my thoughts on living it would be really like bittersweet because mm. you know while I do not want to study anymore <laughs> because yeah. it's really stressful but I would really miss like being able to do it with friends yeah. yeah I mean we've also talked about like how important it is right to have good friends mm-hmm. so those friends will kind of travel with you yeah. everywhere you go yeah. yeah because you guys have gone through like such a like crazy like you know education mm-hmm. and um, it makes you I think it would make like the friendship stronger now you have to prioritize your time as an adult oh yeah, yeah. The, right you get yeah. to like we we have a term called like uh, personal admin mm-hmm. right so it's like doing bills mm-hmm. like finances mm-hmm. like even dealing with like relationships or you know taking care of your parents and then eventually have a kid like mm-hmm. things like that. one other thing I wanted to ask you too and I talked we talked about this before is the what you, what your generation kind of thinks about like life after school like maybe like the general give me like the general mm-hmm. gauge of what your generation is kind of mm-hmm. thinking mm-hmm. like do they want to do the whole like BTO thing mm-hmm. and kind of just um, like you know have a family and settle down um, and then for you personally like what do you want to do okay yeah. I think there there has been a lot of talk about BTO recently like uh, mm-hmm. just among the people around me I think it's mm-hmm. kind of like the BTO like season mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. so I think there there are definitely people who like really see it as something that they, they want for themselves mm-hmm. so you know there are even people in school like they're still schooling and they would like apply for BTO mm-hmm. but I think for me like that that wouldn't be um a top priority mm. I think it also depends on whether like you know you, you found someone that you want yeah. to marry that's true at the moment so if you did I think that would be a huge consideration yeah. but I think on the other hand for people who are still like you know like single or like you know, they don't really want to get married yet mm-hmm. I think it's more about being focused on like our careers yeah. so I think for me personally like I I want to like do hopefully like be able to do well in my career so I think for me like that would be more important to me Mm, yeah that makes sense yeah I think a lot of us also are I yeah I mean I think like Mm -hmm. the 20s is like really continuing finding your own identity yeah for sure and like focusing more on your career and you're basically trying to build stability for your 30s and then 30s is like you know you already have an identity and then you're like oh i need to settle down (laughs) or generally speaking yeah did you have like a time frame though or did you have like a plan you're like i'm getting married at this day and i'm gonna have a baby at this day or you know i'm gonna build my own empire at this (laughs) like did you have like a structured thing for me like Mm-hmm. not really like in in my mind mm-hmm. right now it's just like oh like I just want to do well in in my career mm-hmm. and be able to be like you know independent mm-hmm. and hopefully good at what I do now, I, I'm not sure what I want to do yet but you know hopefully good at what I do and mm-hmm. just to like focus on becoming like a better person mm-hmm. and like someone who's better at what I do so it's more of like a personal walk right now mm-hmm. yeah I will say that like I don't think everyone at any age knows mm-hmm. what they're doing yeah like I have people I talk to they're like yeah. 40 and they're like I don't know what I'm doing and I'm like me either <laughs> so yeah, yeah just for anyone kind of watching mm-hmm. no one knows what they're doing mm-hmm. yeah there's always like one part of their life that they're like I don't know what I'm doing yeah so don't be fooled by like the external looks like hmm. okay any last words for I guess people in general what they should know about NUS as someone who is like graduating Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it as well and I think in like the main takeaway for me like from my journey in NUS is really that um, there's never an end to learning you know like the more you know the more you realize you don't Mm -hmm. and but initially when I when I came in you know like applying for a business degree I thought that by the end of my years in NUS I would be like a business expert Mm -hmm. like being able to to be really good at like everything but I think now that I'm like at the end of it Mm -hmm. I realized that you know whatever I'm learning is just like just so tiny like there's so much more that I get to learn and I think Mm -hmm. the most of what we learn is really when we actually go out there to work you know when we really have to apply it so I think um, with that being said um do not limit your learning to whatever you learn in the classroom Mm. but I think it's really important to just you know like join like 
random committees, you know, there's like um, marketing clubs, investment clubs, um, fintech clubs, this and that. like really there's a lot of things that you can join. So um, yeah, I think that would be an advice that I would give people. That is very wise advice. <laughs> Sage advice from Carmen. <laughs> Seriously, I think that's great. And especially anyone who is, again, watching this, definitely, yeah, take it to heart. I think mm-hmm. everything you said is like definitely, it hits the, the, the hammer, hits it on the nail. That's the right word. <laughs> I'm not sure, but okay. it, it sounds <laughs> right. It sounds right. right. Sounds right. Okay. Thanks for taking the time to come sit no, and thanks for having bringing me, me to yeah. Miso. I like finished the entire thing. Mine is like, <laughs> mine is like full. I know, <laughs> while you're talking. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>